Welcome to World History Channel. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. George and Bertha Russell from HBO's Gilded Age are based on the real-life couple Alva and William Vanderbilt. Born into an aristocratic Southern family, Alva married William Kissam Vanderbilt in 1875. William was the grandson of Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt, one of the richest men in America, and possibly the inspiration for the Gilded Age character, George Russell. Like Bertha, Alva built a grand house on Fifth Avenue, taking up an entire city block. This house would ultimately lead to Alva's acceptance into society, as she threw a masquerade ball to christen the house in 1883 with over 1,000 guests. An often repeated story tells that Vanderbilt felt she had been snubbed by Caroline Astor, queen of elite of New York society, so she purposely neglected to send an invitation to Astor's popular daughter, Carrie. Supposedly, this forced Astor to come calling, in order to secure an invitation to the ball for her daughter. Thus far, George and Bertha's marriage appears rock solid. Mr. and Mrs. Russell spent three years moving on up to the great Fifth Avenue house. They built as George established himself as one of the city's fastest-rising multimillionaires. Yet George doesn't let his business dealings distract from his duties as a husband and father. Mr. Russell warmly encourages Bertha in her desire to raise their family's social standing. When Bertha was insulted in the Gilded Age episode 2, George publicly flaunted his wealth to stand up for her. The only time George and Bertha differ in opinion is on her insistence on keeping their daughter Gladys. As much as George supports Bertha's goals, she also admires her husband and reminds him that even if they lose their fortune, he has the acumen to make another with her help. George and Bertha share the strongest marriage in the Gilded Age, but they do have separate bedrooms. As strange as it seems in the 20th century, married couples in the 19th century didn't sleep together. During the Gilded Age's 1880s timeframe, Dr. Benjamin Ward Richardson wrote articles that warned of the risks of inhaling the germs of the person you shared a bed with. Between the 1850s and 1950s, separate beds were believed to be the healthier option for man and wife, because Victorian doctors warned the weaker sleeper would drain the vitality of the other if they slept in the same bed. Obviously, George and Bertha do share a bed and are physically intimate in the Gilded Age, but Mr. Russell has to ask permission to stay with his wife in her chambers. Bertha replied, you have only to ask. But it also implies the Russells don't sleep together every night. Perhaps an ominous warning sign of the Russells having separate bedrooms is that it could potentially make it easier for George to have an affair, and if the showrunners continue to base this couple on the Vanderbilts, Bertha might divorce George because of this. In 1895, Alva scandalized society by divorcing William Vanderbilt on the grounds of adultery. By divorcing William, she caused her very own scandal. To reclaim her position in society, Alva forced her only daughter to marry a British duke. It was a loveless marriage. The duke had only money on his mind, making the Vanderbilts pay him a dowry of two and a half million dollars to wed their daughter. Adjusting for inflation, that would be over $75 million today. The bride's unhappy father was obliged to sign a contract, the sealing of which the prudent duke had, from the very first, insisted upon. Consuelo was twenty minutes late to her own wedding ceremony and cried behind her veil. They would divorce years later. Already, Gladys in the Gilded Age seems destined to follow her inspiration's path. Like Consuelo, her parents dismissed her first love, an affable American who, albeit from a good family, would have done nothing to advance the family's position. Alva remarried on January 11, 1896, to Oliver Hazard Perry Belmont, one of her ex-husband's old friends. Oliver had been a friend of the Vanderbilts since the late 1880s, and like William was a great fan of yachting and horse races. Upon Oliver's sudden death in 1908, Alva took on the new cause of the women's suffrage movement after hearing a lecture by Ida Husted Harper. Alva Belmont funded several suffragist organizations. She supported Anna Howard Shaw, as president of the National American Woman Suffrage Association and financed a national headquarters in New York City. Later, influenced by the more aggressive tactics of Emmeline Pankhurst in England, she supported Alice Paul and the more radical National Woman's Party, including their campaign of picketing the White House. She served as president of the National Woman's Party after passage of the 19th Amendment when the organization continued advocacy on issues such as an Equal Rights Amendment. She suffered a stroke in the spring of 1932 that left her partially paralyzed, and she died in Paris of bronchial and heart ailments on January 26, 1933. 
Her funeral at St. Thomas Episcopal Church in New York City featured all female pallbearers and a large contingent of suffragists. She is interred with Oliver Belmont in the Belmont Mausoleum at Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, New York.